de deserving it surface level right that's intrinsic right you deserve it. you're a human being you deserve the best in life period but just because you deserve it doesn't mean you have what it takes right now to earn it mm -hmm. right like we talked about um being a millionaire mm -hmm. i think everybody deserves to be a millionaire right everyone deserves to do it but only a certain amount of people are going to do the work that it takes to earn a million dollars yeah right so like you need to become that certain type of person whether it's reading whether it's studying your specific craft it's gonna be different for every person right? it's a different pathway but there is a certain level of work that needs to happen to plan a trip welcome melanated merry millionaires in the making and friends to another impactful episode we're about to go through and highlight a melanated married couple or just go through some lessons that we got make sure y'all tap in with the conversation queen where can they go to tap in the m4show.com yes ma'am and make sure y'all follow us on instagram queen where can they follow us on instagram the m4 show now if y'all haven't liked and subscribed it would make the queen very very happy if you can very. go ahead very very what, what should they do you should go ahead and go ahead and subscribe on apple Podcasts, mm -hmm. spotify youtube wherever you're watching or listening go ahead and hit that subscribe button it's free and your first step to becoming a millionaire go ahead and click that button and uh let's get into the show let's do it beautiful people thank y'all for tapping in we are currently live and where are we at sinclair cartagena colombia uh-huh uh -huh. cartagena colombia um this is just the one stop out of our five six stop world tour um we're gonna well don't if you count bogota if you count tanzania oh, yeah. if you count Zanzibar, if you count Spain, it's like a seven part. I mean, yeah, those are layovers, but Bogota is not Bogota a Bogota for sure. We're, we're there for a day. So there it's a five stop tour. Five stop <laughs> tour, y'all. And uh, each week we're probably going to be in a different location. So we're we're a little bit off the of schedule because of the world tour situation, but we're still going to do the podcast. So we're going to give you all a little bit of uh, experiences. And uh, yeah, let's talk about some stuff. And today I want to talk about mindset. Uh, we were with some folks that we met randomly yesterday on the beautiful food tour that mm -hmm. the queen uh, booked us. And we'll, we'll talk about that later. But I remember like they asked, like, oh, what, what do you do? And you're like, oh, he's the creator of Black Wall Street, the board game. And said something. They're like, oh, and we're like, what do you do? And like, I'm just a data analyst. Right. And I was like, well, why do you, know, why do you say it like that? Like, you're a data analyst. That's dope. And they're like, yeah. But no, nah, it's not as cool as what y'all yeah. are doing. Oh, uh, and I was like, but we're we're in literally the same spot. No matter like what the lifestyle looks like, we ended up both on this vacation in Colombia, and they're just like, hmm, your mindset is what got you here, right? That's why you are where you are, <laughs> right, right? You have a good mindset. So we're gonna talk a little bit uh, today about just growth mindset, exposure mindset, and things that we've thought about, and things that we've literally manifested, and how that's got us to where we are today. Does that sound good? Sounds good. And uh, this should be a short episode. People who uh, have listened before know that every time I say that, <laughs> it never ends up short. Two hours but later. This, this is going to be a short episode because we have a dinner reservation out here in Colombia. And uh, yeah, we're not going to miss that. No, we're not. All right. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. Over 50% of Black Americans are unmarried and only 2% of Black families in America have a net worth over $1 million. We are on our journey to not only join that 2%, but grow that 2%. Facts. I'm Devon Travell, creator of Black Wall Street, the board game with my beautiful co-host. I'm Sinclair, a.k.a. The Health Nerd. You can go to our website at TheM4Show.com our Instagram at the M4 show and our YouTube channel at melanated married millionaires in the main. And welcome to the M4 show. Welcome back, beautiful people to another amazing, impactful episode of the M4 show melanated married millionaires in the making. I'm your host, Devon Chavelle, creator of black wall street, the board game. And of course I have with me, my international, my eyebrow dancing, my coconut rice loving, my mm. fried fish, mm. whole mm. fried fish loving queen herself. Please introduce yourself. 
what is up everybody my name is sinclair uh-huh. aka the health nerd and i do love me some, some whole fried fish i didn't even know i liked whole fried fish really until, until like, like two years two ago, years ago yeah. when we went to shout out to buna our favorite ethiopian restaurant yep. in little ethiopia um but yeah ever since then i've been like on, the, on the hunt and yeah hooked. hooked on some whole fried fish i feel like probably back in the day you would be like ew fried fish no like whole fried fish whole with fried. Eyes yeah, yeah with like, everything i'd have been like eh, cut it and fillet it now right. i'm like eh, give me the bones give yeah, me everything bro. literally today it's <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm not really one to clean some chicken bones, but I oh, clean some fish bones. Cleaned it out. Um, which is interesting. Again, we're talking about mindset in this episode, mm-hmm. and your mindset has changed through exposure to eating your first fried whole fish, yep. loving it, yep. delicious. And now it's like, okay, well, now I look for it. Now I see it as an opportunity. And I want to talk about that for travel. Mm-hmm. Um, so our first trip, and we're, we're doing this because I feel like a lot of folks when we talk about travel, like they, like, it's like, oh, you're lucky for doing that. Right. Like, oh, I can't believe you're doing that. You're so lucky. And yes, we are lucky. We're definitely blessed. We had a moment was that today or yesterday when I was just like, we're yes. really in Columbia. Yes. I mean, we, I feel like we've had a moment like that every time. <laughs> just, trust me, we do not take like these opportunities for granted. Like literally we'll be like, we are in Columbia right, right. now. Like that's crazy coming from where we started. And if y'all have been rocking with us, you know where, where we started. But Queen, talk to talk to me and talk to us about our first travel experience together and how that kind of opened the door mm-hmm. to exposure. And I don't know, I, I, I think I know what, what our first one is, but maybe I'm wrong because I don't plan most of them. Is it in Hawaii? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was our first like outside of California trip. Mm-hmm. Um mine is Vegas. Vegas. Vegas doesn't count y'all unless you're unless you're from like New York. Right. from California. Yeah. It was literally like a, a couple hour drive with nothing. Right. Um, but yeah, so literally the night of graduation, black graduation, mm-hmm. um, we walked the stage, we strolled across the stage. Yeah. We had a joint family dinner um, afterwards. Shout out to Walter Robinson for hooking that up. RIP. RIP. Um, and then we went to a party or something to turn up a little bit, we party with my brother. Mm-hmm. And then we literally went to the airport and hopped on a plane to get to Hawaii. Um, And so we traveled to Waikiki. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was like our first travel experience. And it wasn't a long trip. I think it was like four days. Mm -hmm. Um, That was our first time using Airbnb. I feel like that's when it was like still experimental for folks to be using Airbnb. And I was like, oh, I'm not we're gonna try it here. So yeah, we tried our first Airbnb. um, And yeah, we had just a great time walking around, trying new food. We did kayaking. We went to like kayaks to a bird sanctuary. Uh, sanctuary in like the middle of the, not the middle of the ocean, but like, you know, a little bit out of the shore. Um, we lucked out and we rented a car. And when we got to the car rental, they were like, oh, sorry, all we have is a convertible Mustang. We were like, oh, no. Cruising. We enjoyed that. We Cruising. enjoyed that. First, I think definitely my first time in a convertible. I don't know if that was your first time. Yeah, I'm not. My students know I'm not a convertible type of guy. I drive a Prius. I'm very functional. I'm very <laughs> practical. So yeah, driving the Mustang convertible was like out of character, but it was very fun. Yeah, yeah. So it was, yeah, it was nice. We we took a hike. Um, started raining on the hike. Mm. Uh, but yeah, like we didn't do anything too crazy. I think it was just like we need to do. We deserve this. Yes. We had been literally rocking. Like for those of y'all who know our story, like we met literally the first day that we were both on on Davis's campus, mm-hmm. um, and so we had been with each other all the way throughout our college journey. So mm-hmm. it was like, man, we deserve this. We deserve to go celebrate. Let's go to Hawaii. We don't need a passport or anything, right? Let's go to Hawaii real quick and just celebrate our this 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 moment. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that definitely gave us the travel bug. Um, and ever since then, we've been like, where else can we go? Yeah. Where else can we go? All right. What are we celebrating? Now it's not, we're not even celebrating anything. We're just life. <laughs> celebrating okay. life. Um, I want to circle back to something that you said. And you said, we deserve this. Yeah. Um, and for the folks that are listening, I know, I know y'all are hard workers, right? Some of y'all have, have families, have wives, husbands, partners, kids. You're working that nine to five. And maybe you haven't taken a vacation in years, right? Maybe the last vacation was just you at the house. <laughs> <laughs> and you gave yourself time to clean, which mm-hmm. I know like that's very intentional and vital sometimes. You just need two, three days to not work, to just clean the house and take care of yourself. But in addition to that, you also deserve to see the world, 
to have new experiences. Um, I had a good talk with, I don't know if this person wants me to say their name out loud, so I won't say the name, but in the conversation that we had, I, I, I was telling to them, like, you deserve this, mm -hmm. right? And I think you, you self-sabotage yourself mm -hmm. sometimes, and it wasn't you, Sinclair. <laughs> I would I would say it, it could have been <laughs> the way that conversation it. was going. <laughs> I'd be like, remember Sinclair? We were having, <laughs> well, you know, I try to put my other friends out on blast, but hey, Queen, you're my co host. So it's like 97% of the conversation, 87% mm, of the conversation, mm, 77. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about a lot. Yeah. We were talking about a lot. <laughs> uh, but, you know, long story short, I was talking to this person who had been kind of self sabotaging themselves mm -hmm. for, for a certain amount of time, not being receptive of the blessings that were coming to them. And I was just like, listen, you deserve the best, mm -hmm. right? Stop self sabotaging yourself. Stop saying no to opportunities that are presenting themselves and accept it. Right. And I know sometimes it's a vulnerable position to accept blessings. Cause like, what if those, that blessing gets taken away? Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like, we're afraid of taking that amazing trip or taking that promotion, starting that business. Cause what if we did that risk and accepted it? But then it got taken away. Right. And sometimes that, that can definitely hurt. But you deserve to take that chance and to be exposed to that better side of life. Right. So if we're talking about mindset shift here. I think that's the first step in that mindset shift is understanding that you deserve the best in life. You deserve all that love, all the blessings, all the wealth. And after you create that mindset around knowing that you deserve it, now it's okay. How do I plan around making it happen? And I think it's, I think one of the things that I had to change from my mindset, it's like, you deserve it right now with who you are right now, mm. with all of your flaws, mm. right? It's not like you have to solve every problem that you have in your, in your book, or you have to fix all of your flaws in order for you to deserve that. You right now, as you are, deserve that. Mm. Um, that doesn't mean you stop and you get complacent. You always work for growth and that personal growth, but it also means that you need to give yourself, it cut yourself a little bit of a break and realize that you deserve it right now as well. I'm going to push down that just slightly. Okay. Just slightly. Uh, I agree with the, the initial thought of you deserve it right now as you are. Mm -hmm. But, and then I think there is that secondary step that needs to happen to where you work towards earning it. Mm -hmm. uh, so de deserving it surface level, right? That's intrinsic, right? You deserve it. You're a human being. You deserve the best in life, period. Mm -hmm. But just because you deserve it doesn't mean you have what it takes right now to earn it. Mm. Right. Like we talked about um, being a millionaire. Mm. I think everybody deserves to be a millionaire. Right. Everyone deserves to do it. But only a certain amount of people are going to do the work that it takes to earn a mm. million dollars. Yeah. Right. So like you need to become that certain type of person, whether it's reading, whether it's studying your specific craft. It's going to be different for every person. Right? It's a different pathway. But there is a certain level of work that needs to happen to plan a trip. And that's why I think that's, if we're talking about the initial mindset step, mm -hmm. I feel like that's why I'm saying you deserve it now because yes. just because you deserve it now doesn't mean you can go to the airport and hop on a plane and go right. There's True. still those. There's someone that just listened to this though, Sinclair, and they're like, I deserve it. You right. And they swipe their credit card oh, no. knowing that they weren't in the position to do it right now. Right. Right. So yes, you deserve it right now, but let's let's be intentional and let's plan out right. how you can make this work with your current finances, with the vacation time you have or may not ha may not have, with the, the friends you want to go with. Like there are steps mm -hmm. that you need to go into before you just hop on that plane right. or we don't know your position. You might be in the position literally right now where you can, you have the money in the bank, you have vacation, you're retired, you're an entrepreneur. You might be able to just, you know what, let me look at a flight to Costa Rica, Thailand today, hop on a plane. You might be in that position literally right now. It's very possible. Who knows? Yeah. I'm sure there's some people out there, but yeah, I mean, if that's not you, then it's like you deserve to, Go to your boss on Monday and be like, "Hey, mm. what is it? What is it? What do I need to do to be able to get that month and that that uh, week in July off? Mm. Or you know, how much how much vacation time do I have? Or to start looking at the flights, right? Start budgeting. How much money do I need? To, you deserve to start that process at yeah. least, right? Um, and so yeah, I think that that is the first step because I feel like a lot of people are just like, eh, yeah, I don't, I don't. There's just so much to do. There's always stuff to do." I feel like there being stuff to do cannot keep you from seeing the world if that's something you want to do, yeah. because there will always be uh, something, there will always be a reason to not go, mm -hmm. put it that way, whether it's a pandemic or something politically happening, like there is 
always something happening. So you just have to make up your mind, know that you deserve it and make it happen. I say, I say, um, I want to move into, so first mindset thing is knowing that you deserve it. Mm -hmm. Is there another mindset shift that you think helped us be willing to see more of the world? I think it was the idea that there is growth that comes from being uncomfortable or from going to see places that you're not already familiar with. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like, and this is, you know, if, if you want to start maybe with seeing the, the United States more power to you, I think that's great. But I think it's, there's something really, there's something slightly uncomfortable about going to Thailand if you've never been, because you don't know much about it, right? right. You don't know the language. You don't know a lot about it. It takes a lot of research and not a lot, but it takes a little bit of research to know like, okay, what are the, what, what's okay there? What's not okay there. Right. Um, and it can be a little bit uncomfortable, even the flight, like, oh my gosh, how long of a flight, yeah, right? The, the flight was uncomfortable. We will be honest with you. The flight was semi uncomfortable, but it's been the only flight where we've gotten all you can eat Hagen dazs mm -hmm. and, and all you can drink wine. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put that right there for anyone who wants to pick that up. It's there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's, it's, there's a level of uncomfortability with visiting a new place mm -hmm. that is unfamiliar to you. And I think that that brings exposure, which I know we'll, we'll talk about and, and growth because it's like, okay, well now I am here where I have to start learning the language. I have to start mm -hmm. learning how to ask people where the bathroom is or, you know, how much something costs or saying hello and how are you, right? You have to learn to get out of your comfort zone. Um, so I think the, the shift, the mindset shift of like, it's okay to put yourself outside of your comfort zone and that's where growth comes. Mm -hmm. I think we've seen that a lot um, just from, you know, seeing new things, learning new languages. We still sometimes like, well, we'll use those languages. And um, every time we, you know, hear it, we're like, oh, you know, you know what that means, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that that's cool. Um, but then also, yeah, just like every, every place we visit, like kind of inspires us for like, oh man, wouldn't that, wouldn't that architecture be cool in our dream house? Exactly. Or, you know, those types of things. Um, and I think it, or, or business ideas, right? Every trip, we come up with some type of business Every idea. Um, Literally, we were just talking about a business idea that can spawn into an entire economic system. Mm -hmm. It was it was a really good idea. We're not going to tell you right now because it's like seven years out. It's a really good idea. <laughs> um, but I wanted to, to riff on that because what book was I reading, Sinclair? You're always reading some What book was I reading? It was a book about, it was an interview with Andrew Carnegie and the writer of and Napoleon Hill, mm -hmm. right? Napoleon Hill was interviewing him and Andrew Carnegie was telling him about the two different types of imaginations. Mm -hmm. Oh right? yeah, I yeah, talk yeah. about I talked about this the other day. And one, one type is synthetic imagination and the other type is creative imagination. So I'm, I'm gonna focus on synthetic. What synthetic imagination is, it's combining two ideas that already exist in the world, but putting them together in a unique way. Mm -hmm. And I think traveling, going to Thailand, going to Colombia, going to Tulsa's Black Wall Street, like seeing new cultures helps your mind be exposed literally to new things. Right. And then now your brain can synthetically put together all these different unique combinations of stuff so that when you come back to the United States, you're able to create something that only you can create because it's a combination of things that only you've seen. Your lived experience. It's your lived experiences, right? So if nothing else and y'all y'all know i'm entrepreneurship like that's like <laughs> how my brain works if nothing else obviously the food's amazing the travel's amazing but i think being able to expose your brain to new ideas and new things and be able to come back to the states and uniquely put them together in a way that now it's marketable and you can create wealth from it mm -hmm. if nothing else right this is the m4 show right we're trying to help uh, a, a thousand or a hundred millionaires, millenated couples achieve millionaire shit. Did I say that correctly? I think so. Something like that. All right. Yeah. We'll read the slogan. All right. <laughs> Trying to help a, a, a hundred couples get to a million dollars net worth. And I think exposure is a great way to do that. Was it you who told yes. me? Probably. Um, <laughs> we're, I feel like at some point we were talking about how you can only imagine what you've been exposed to or something like mm -hmm. that. What's the like your brain can't make up new things. So right. you can only dream things that you've seen before. Yes. So I think that, if you think about just that, 
that I think tells you why exposure and traveling is so important. Mm -hmm. Because if you have only stay in your little bubble, your imagination will only be like, there's a glass ceiling almost, right? Where it's like, you can't go too much further than this because you only know so much. Yep. And I think that social media and everything, I think does help that a little bit because you can at least get exposed to things through your screen, but it's a totally different experience going in there in person and actually, you know, exper experiencing the culture, meeting the people, interacting, eating the food, that type of thing. Um, so I think that's why we always get these types of ideas because the minute you're exposed to something else, now, more possibilities, right? Millions and trillions of possibilities right. start being able, you know, start opening up to you and being possible. Um, so I think that just starts to make connections in your brain and mm -hmm. like, poof, out mm -hmm. comes this new idea. It is. The more you see, the bigger you can dream. Mm -hmm. All right. Rochelle, quote that, <laughs> make a little graphic. Boom, right there. Easy, easy money. Uh, okay. So th those two things, right? So one, exposure and through entrepreneurship or just through your own life other mindset shift is you deserve this, right? You can, you can take, take that mindset to anything, anything. It doesn't have to be travel. It can be, you deserve love, right? Mm -hmm. You deserve to find someone who treats you well and treats you the way that you deserve. You deserve freedom, whatever that looks like for you. You deserve to be healthy. You deserve to be able to wake up and your body not be in pain, right? You deserve the best. And then the second thing is travel just for the exposure. See the world, y'all. See the world. Um, now, I thought like there was another place that you wanted to go. You, you said something like, oh, we'll get to that later. I said exposure, but we pretty much already covered on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just like what, how exposure, I think, challenges you to, to and, and allows you to be able to think of new possibilities. Okay. That's really what I was trying to get at. Got you. Okay. So we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, Sinclair, I want you to talk about so far, your favorite part of Colombia, right? Like what the culture you've been exposed to, you can talk about the food tour, talk about your favorite part of Colombia. Um, and then we will end with talking about what we look forward to with this trip moving forward. Okay. Sound good? Sounds good. Cool. We will be right back. Look, we'll get right back into the amazing podcast. But if you didn't know, in 2017, we created Black Wall Street, the board game, because we thought more families needed to know about the history of Tulsa Black Wall Street. More families needed to know about the legacy of Black excellence left behind of Tulsa Black Wall Street, that we can own a Madam C.J. Walker Beauty Salon. We can have a Booker T. Washington High School. We can have an Uncle Steve's Barbecue. We can have a Renaissance man like Simon Barry who had his own taxi service and bus service that got bought out by the city of Tulsa. We have brilliance in our DNA. We wanted to make sure that your family can play a game that teaches them about this brilliance. So we have Black Wall Street, the board game right here. We had the first edition available in 2017. That got sold out. We're on the second edition right now, or you can get the beautiful masterpiece version of the game as well. It's up to you. Head to playblackwallstreet.com and get yourself Black Wall Street, the board game to empower you, your family, and generations to come. Playblackwallstreet.com. Let's get back to the episode. All right, we are back. Uh, again, we are live in Cartagena, Colombia. Shout out to Exposure, shout out to Traveling. We really hope y'all y'all get the experience. Uh, real real quick plug while, while Sinclair is about to go into her uh, recap of what we've experienced so far. Exposure, right? We take an annual trip to Black Wall Street every year. Mm -hmm. This is also a great way to expose you to the history of Tulsa Black Wall Street, expose you to entrepreneurs, our squad, our team's going to be there, be able to, to network with folks, support the local businesses that are still in Greenwood, be exposed to some of that history. So if you're if you're interested in coming, just leave a comment below or send an email to info at playblackwallstreet.com. Uh, we are most likely going to be going in the month of August. It's not 100% confirmed yet. Uh, we're definitely going. It's probably going to be the first weekend of August or the second weekend of August. Here's the info, playblackwallstreet.com. Bye bye. Um, Sinclair. Devon. Sinclair. Devon. Sinclair. <laughs> um, hit the folks with what we've done so far. It's only been two days. It feels like a long time. We're about to be out for four weeks. Jeez. <laughs> We're these, on day two. These two days have been long. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a good thing. Right. I feel like the days in the States go by so quick because I'm just driving on the freeway for probably five of those hours a day. And then, yeah. yeah. Days go by. So on this as well. Yeah. 
Um, so, so far, um, we did a food tour yesterday. Um, that's something that we do pretty much everywhere we go. We try to do a food tour because let's be real, part of why we travel is to, a big part of why we travel part. <laughs> is to be exposed to new food. Exposure. And to, <laughs> and to try new food. And so a food tour is a great is a great way to not only tour the city, because naturally by walking around to the new restaurants and, um, you know, the different restaurants that the, the tour guide is going to show you, you do usually pass certain monuments or areas and they will tell you about, you know, the history of the culture. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a good way to not only see the city, but to also get exposed to the local food. Um, and you learn about the history of the food. And I mean, we learned so much history just from the food that we ate yeah. yesterday. It was, and it was just really cool because I'm, for me, like history was never my favorite subject. It never was, I'm sorry. Um, but learning about it in connection to food, it just sticks with me for some reason. <laughs> nope. uh, like literally earlier, I was just like, Shakira was on in the restaurant we were listening to. And I was just like, I never made the connection of why uh, Shakira used to do like belly dancing. I used to be like, I'm confused, isn't that Middle Eastern? But she's mm. Colombian. And literally, it all made sense when we started the food tour because the first stop we went to was a little uh, shop where they were making like Lebanese, um, like cro croquettes, I don't know what you call them. Kind of. um, and so, yeah, we tried that. And I was surprised to hear that there was so much uh, Lebanese culture in, here, in, in Colombia, in Cartagena specifically. Um, but yeah, like, the fact that I tried it and I held it for some reason, I know it's going to stick with me a little mm. bit more. And I'm just like, Oh, okay. It makes sense now. No, that's a good nugget for, for teachers, for homeschooling parents. Like if you're trying to teach something, you can teach it in the classroom, but you also go somewhere mm. and learn it. It's, it's, it sticks better. Yeah. So yes, we did the food tour. That was really cool. Uh, we, we had like 16 different tasting, mm. we had, uh, different empanadas. We had a Chinese empanada. Shout out to Munoz. Yeah. Um, we had um, candy, we yep. had Colombian coffee. coffee, we had rum, um, plantain, plantain, uh, patacones, patacones, patacones. Sí. Um, yeah, Ceviche, not ceviche, uh, shrimp cocktail, shrimp, shrimp cocktail, shrimp cocktail. Um, arepas. Um, so yeah, it was just really, really cool to not only walk around and experience old town or old city, the walled city, um, to also hear from a local, uh, you know, Cartagena. Cartagena? Don't look at me, Sinclair. Cartagenian? Don't look at me. A local person from Cartagena. There you go. Uh, shout out to Sammy. Um, just about the rich history there. Um, about, you know, he showed us like, oh, this is the wall. And this is why it's only part of the wall now. And this is where it used to go. And so it was cool to get that type of history while also enjoying good food. Mm. That's been my favorite part so far. And what I loved about the tour, and this, you know, this, this happened naturally. We, I didn't know this was going to happen. But apparently the African diaspora has had a strong mm -hmm. influence on Cartagena as well. Mm -hmm. um, from the Africans being, I think, the first group that started fighting for liberation in Cartagena against the Spanish, from the, the double frying of plantains and fish to, uh, what else was there? The, the candies that were being yeah. sold, like there was just a lot of stops that were African, mm -hmm. and that was, that was also dope. And we're tomorrow mm -hmm. tomorrow going to the Pelenque uh I don't know if it's a village yeah. community village um to even learn even more about that history but I think it was cool that we were on a mainstream food tour and on the mainstream food tour there was inherently a lot of African influence as well so you no know, shout out to the diaspora we ain't here y'all we indeed, ain't here indeed and I think it's cool to what I, one of the times I was going to make too is you know we created Black Wall Street, the board game, right? A black town. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to, everywhere we travel, we try to, you know, uh, patronage black businesses um, and really experience black culture wherever we are. Um, and so we try our best to do that. So I think it was very fitting. The minute I saw it, like, oh, there's a, you know, a tour you can go on to see the Palenque village um, and really experience African culture in Colombia. I was like, oh, done. That was the first excursion we booked for nice. this entire trip. Well um, done, thank well you. Done. So I think it's just very on brand for us. And I'm excited to see more about the history and everything mm -hmm. of the Palenque, which um, it's just cool to think that it's a, uh, so we hear a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, African centralized, authentic. I guess not authentic, but like preserved. Preserved, yeah. Yeah, like their history, it seems like a lot of their culture and history is preserved or has been preserved over the years. Um, and, I, and, and I'm excited to just go and see like 
what it's like to be African in Colombia. Yeah. I mean, that's just a very interesting experience that I never would have thought that I would be experiencing, but yeah. I'm excited to, to go and try the food, to just yes. talk with those people, have them walk us around their village. Um, yeah, exposure. I'm just excited to be exposed to something new. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm excited to kind of compare in a respectful way the Africans in Ghana, mm-hmm. that, that culture, the, the, the prints, the language, the food to Africans that are now made a home in Colombia. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm just wanting to see what connections. Obviously, the, like the print are already kind of connected. Uh, we saw some Indinkra symbols at mm-hmm. the, the spot we were at last night. So there's clearly a cross culture there. Um, but yeah, I'm wondering how close the, the language would be. I still remember a little bit of Tui. I'm sorry. I tried it yesterday, though, and they didn't say nothing. So um, <laughs> they speak Tui. I think what's interesting is you mentioned the Indinkra symbols. I don't remember there actually being every anybody black working at that restaurant or, or bar there. It wasn't, but it was Casa de Palenque. Right. That's what, I, that's what I was trying to get into. It just shows more about how really ingrained into the culture of, of Colombia mm-hmm. here it is. Mm-hmm. Um, because, yeah, it's already like it's kind of everywhere without being everywhere. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that was that was really cool um, to see to see that represented at like a really nice bar. Well, it's um, on like in the background, just like a decoration. It was mm-hmm. really cool. Nice. Um, okay, Sinclair, I want us to enter into the Ask the Claire segment. Before I ask my potential question, do you have any questions that you would like to provide? I do. I think I know the answer, but the people don't, so I'm going to ask it for y'all. It's for the people. For the, for the people. <laughs> Mi gente. Mi gente. <laughs> um, Devon, uh-huh. what are you most excited for for this trip? Whether it's the place or an experience or. Yeah, I'm thinking about it, thinking about it. Um, I feel like I'm most excited about the Palenque tour. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm a, I'm a history nerd. So I'll be, yeah, I just want to learn more that, about that history as a kind of a Kickstarter. And then obviously I'm going to do my own research. So probably when we get home, buy a whole bunch of books and then like dive into it and then be able to teach a course on <laughs> this history. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited about that history because it's it's a very unique perspective. I find the blending of cultures interesting. Mm-hmm. The fact that you have bits of your African roots, but and then there's bits of your, I guess, Spanish heritage and Colombian heritage that's here through the language, through the food, through the culture, through the dancing. Um, so yeah, I just find it interesting, like what aspects of culture, I don't know if choose is the right word, but have remained versus what aspects of culture has been remixed mm-hmm. and evolved. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think mean, that's, that's what I'm excited about. And that's for the whole trip? Oh, for the whole trip? Oh, Zanzibar is what I'm most that's excited what I about. I, was cool. I, I thought we were zoomed in because <laughs> you were in Colombia. No. So for Colombia, that's what I'm most excited about. For the whole trip, Zanzibar is what I'm most excited about. We'll be live in Zanzibar barring any internet issues that happen. Um, but one, because that's your first time in Africa. So that's just going to be dope uh, to get to the, the queen, back to the motherland. The beaches have been beautiful. Um, and then we may or may not be looking at some some real estate stuff out there, which is just fun and exciting. Manifesting, right? right. Dreaming, right. manifesting. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I'm most excited about. We've also talked about the possibility of retiring in Africa mm-hmm. or, or retiring abroad. And Zanzibar is one of those spots. So I think it'd be cool to get there. And hopefully it's a vibe. And it's like, yeah, we can we can do this. Right. We can retire right. here. Right. So that's what, yeah, we, we've been talking to Zanzibar up. For months. Yeah, I'm almost worried. Like, have we put too much God, hype on hey, it? <laughs> we've been hyping it up, y'all. And I'm hoping it lives up. Lives up. Ex- at least ex- 70%. Exceeds. Listen, just, exceeds. Just, just, just be almost there. Because <laughs> in my head, it's, it's paradise. Right. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I'm most excited about. All right. um, for you, what do you think is the most important part of traveling that you want to? Uh, you want your kids to know and grow up with. Right? The most important aspect of traveling, if you can teach them one lesson about traveling, how to travel correctly, or how to get the most out of travel, mm-hmm. what is that lesson you would want them to have? And I'm, keep speaking. Um, <laughs> You're giving me time. Giving you time to speak. Um, 
I guess it's going to go back to like learning about history and culture through food. <laughs> yep. I mean, because that's that is like I said, a big part of why I like to travel. Um, and yeah, for me, I've, I feel like I've had so many light bulb moments and so many cool moments that all have come around some type of food experience or uh, restaurant experience or food tour or whatever. So I would say um, at least one of the things I would say is, yeah, learning, learning and experiencing new cultures through food mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and really taking that and applying it and seeing like, OK, how can this influence now? Like maybe it make, maybe it turns into a new recipe. Maybe you add a little extra to spice, or you try and you expose again. It's exposure to something new. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not just trying it that one time and then that's it. Um, it's like how do you now integrate that into your life, lifestyle, into yeah. your lifestyle? Yeah, for for the better. Um, and then I would say the other thing is just again like really ex really exposing yourself and getting out there and learning the culture and learning the language wherever you are. Because I feel like it's cool to just go, but if you just travel, if we were just here and we just sat up in this Airbnb all day. Which is very easy, because this Airbnb is nice. It is. It's a good view, air conditioning, mm -hmm. TV, listen. Like, yeah, and especially with all the like nice resorts out there, like I feel like it can be very easy to just stay there and you know go to the pool from the room to the restaurant and just do that and you know can that still be relaxing if that's if you have some trips like that that's fine too but i feel like getting out to the local spots going yeah. to explore in the city or in the, the villages or whatever right in a safe manner right make sure you're with somebody or make sure you've done your research but um i think that that is really where the magic happens to me the magic traveling happens to me mm -hmm. if i think about like all of the really cool things that have happened to us when we're traveling, it's all been like on an excursion or, you know, out on the town. What's up? <laughs> so it's been like on Bangla Road in Thailand where we did meet up with other people from Atlanta and just had a great time, like a great night. Um, you know, seeing the sea turtles in the middle of uh, yeah. the ocean in Costa Rica, like. Yeah memory right right things that have that require you to get outside of your hotel room outside of the resort outside of whatever and, and go up there and live life so i would say that's the other thing that i would want for my kids and for everybody to know about traveling is that you got to get out there a little bit um and you know have some fun do something new like it, it again it can be a little bit uncomfortable like okay i've never gone jet skiing before mm -hmm. well now's the time to try yeah. right it's i think it's it's just something really cool about saying like oh i've done that Right? Doesn't mean you, if you don't like it, fine, but now you know, right? But I think it's just really cool to get out there and experience new things, new culture, new people. That's where I think the magic of traveling happens and where exposure, I think you can really get the most out of exposure. Oh, yeah. And what's coming to, to my mind, and hopefully I won't uh, rant too much, Queen, is the idea of tourism versus immersion. Mm. I think it's very easy to be a tourist and just walk around, um, you know, get get on the, the buses and do the do the tours, but never actually kind of go off the beaten path just a little bit mm -hmm. and go where local folks are and like really just be there and be immersed right. in the culture. Uh, and I think that's what we got. When we went to Thailand on Bangla Road. That's what we got when we were in Costa Rica and we kind of rolled the dice a little bit and got on that boat and dude was like hey i'll take you on a boat tour to a private island and come back sunset we were like uh see <laughs> <laughs> like, we'll, we'll see. do it we'll, we'll do it <laughs> oh and that was just a really beautiful experience yeah just, that was <laughs> that was that was god looking after us um last night when we were in the plaza mm -hmm. de Tenera, like mm -hmm. that was like immersed and like right. they were doing their their hip-hop dancing and uh break dancing and stuff we were just in the crowd, right? No security, no uh, tour guide, just there in the moment. And mm -hmm. I feel like those are really our best experiences. Cause when we went, look back at what we did in Jamaica, right? Which we, we wanted to be a really dope experience. We were tourists in Jamaica, yeah, yeah. right? We were, we were in the resort for the most part. We went off the resort for a little bit, but we had the security guard. We mm -hmm. were, went to one, to one place, went right back and we didn't have that immersed experience. And we look back at our locations in our travels that's like yeah right Jamaica was cool and i i want to love jamaica so bad right but it was like yeah that was, that was cool but my ghana experience immersed mm -hmm. dope experience hopefully zanzibar immersed mm -hmm. dope experience uh, okay i'm done ranting no, give me bad. out wasn't too bad? That was too bad good i pulled myself out before i got bad <laughs> um but 
we hope y'all, you know, gotten this a, a little bit of my mindset shift here. If you're if you're already in the mindset of I'm, I travel, I'm going to travel. Go ahead and leave a comment. Where is the next place that you're going? Mm -hmm. right, where, where's the next spot? Whether it's New Jersey, New York, Canada, Jamaica, Thailand, somewhere in Africa, Maldives, Maldives Bali. Go ahead and drop inside the chat. Where is the next place that you're going and what type of. I guess, mindset shift or lifestyle shift do you want to gain from going to that location, All right? And if Ooh. it's a place that's on my list, our list, be expecting a message right. if you, <laughs> for if recommendations. You, if you say Bali, a random place in India or Italy, uh, Maldives. Maldives, if you say anything like that, any type of island, you're going to get a message. All right? Hey, so just, how you doing? Tell prepare. me more. Just prepare, right? <laughs> Um, but yeah, let, let us know. Um, Queen, let's get into some quick updates before we go to this amazing dinner reservation. Um, as usual, we have our Playback Wall Street has our uh, Leaders Innovating Tomorrow or LIT uh, program. It's a 12-week financial literacy program where we are eight teaching 8 to 12. Yes. Eight, make sure no one's going to get 12. upset when they see this episode. Like, hold on, you sent me an eight-week proposal. It's 8 to 12. We eight appreciate you. to 12. Uh, week uh, program where we go into middle schools and high schools and ask the students what is a problem that they see in their community or their household um, and then teach them how to create a business that solves that problem. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are looking for schools, especially in the Inland Empire, that are interested in having this program at their school. Um, so if that is sounds like someone like you or you know somebody who... <laughs> <laughs> who works at Inland Empire School or thinks would, would love to hear more about this program, uh, have them reach out to us at info at playblackwallstreet.com and we will definitely get back to them and see what we can make happen. Yes, ma'am. Um, we've been getting a beautiful response when it comes to the Leaders Innovating Tomorrow program. Um, shout out to the entire team, right? Because we are currently here in Columbia while the team Amazing train staff is holding us down uh, while we're doing this because this trip was planned before we started lit, right? right? So we, we were always going to do this. Um, and there were some schools that really wanted us to, to do some stuff at their, at their school while we were planning on being out. Mm -hmm. And we almost said no, but we really didn't want to not expose those students to financial literacy, not expose those students to a mentor just because we wanted to take a vacation. So it forced us to grow a lot as entrepreneurs it forced us to grow a lot as as trainers, as managers, as people who are responsible um, for a team. And I think we're becoming a better company for it. Yeah. All right. So uh, just huge shout out to the entire lit team who's holding us down. And again, we're receiving a lot of love and out, not outreach interest in the program. So if you are interested, definitely reach out um, and we'll hopefully be able to have you for the fall. Right. The fall. All right, uh, 2023 uh, and beyond. Um, now, in parallel to that, we also have Black Wall Street, the board game still available for you all. If you go to playblackwallstreet.com, you can get yourself the second edition of Black Wall Street, the board game to expose your family to the history and legacy of Tulsa's Black Wall Street and the mindset of being an owner instead of a consumer. Right, that's what we're hopefully teaching you all through that game. And as you land on the Madam CJ Walker Beauty Salon, a OW Girly Hotel, a William Jean Land Theater, you have a choice to either use it as a customer or own it as a sole proprietor. And we're hoping that through the game, you're making that decision slowly but surely, you'll start to make that decision in life to also become an owner. So if you're interested in exposing your family to that mindset shift, it's that black excellence, black history, make sure you all go to playblackwallstreet.com and get yourself a game. Queen, Yes. you got anything else for the beautiful people before we head out for the evening? Just stay tuned as we go throughout this trip, get these live updates. Yeah. We're going to be like actively recording as we're in this, these places. Again, all, all pen, depending on Wi-Fi, but um, but yeah, I'm excited to, to continue to see like how these episodes play out as we're experiencing them in real time. So stay tuned with us and, uh, yeah, that's it. 100%. Um, we'll small note. We again know that we are blessed mm -hmm. and we are very thankful for, for the opportunities for the folks that are listening, the folks that who have supported play black wall street 
or the M4 show over the years. We also, we appreciate your continued support and uh, looking forward to hopefully connecting with you all in Tulsa or on somebody's island somewhere soon. <laughs> all right. My name is Devon Travell, co-host of the M4 show, Melanated Mary Millionaires in the Making and Creator of Black Wall Street, the board game with my beautiful co-host. What is up? Or goodbye. <laughs> my name is Sinclair. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. Thank you. Thank you for supporting the M4 show and our mission to increase the wealth of black families. If you received any value from this episode, any value at all, any, 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 do us a favor and give us a like and subscribe on YouTube and Apple, Spotify, all anything, them. all of them, all, them. all of them, wherever you're listening, <laughs> go ahead and like and subscribe. And after you like and subscribe, make sure you send this episode to at least one family that you really want to see win. We'll catch y'all next time. Peace.